And from the first lesson, mm -hmm. I learned exactly why baskets that are the size of a, a bobbin of thread will cost hundreds of dollars. <laughs> this is difficult. Basket weaving is something that you either like or you don't like or you have the patience for or you don't. You're going to take it over the bottom one and you're going to swap these two. So up and down. And of the 12 in our class, I was the only one that actually stuck it out and finished. And I think that it was because of the elder interaction and I had a close connection with them um, outside of school. We're adding a spoke, and it's just like it would be the next split. You know, if there's one the that's thin. Around, huh? if the Grass basket weaving is, is our oldest and longest running program here, and it was really very fortuitous timing at the same time that the Kodiak Historical Society was incorporating as a nonprofit with a mission to collect and preserve cultural traditions of, of Kodiak. There was a lady, Anfisa Shapsnikov, who was from Atka, then lived in on Alaska and was a, an expert basket weaver. Eunice Nesseth visited with Anfisa and observed her weaving baskets and asked her if she'd be interested in teaching the art form and she agreed and for the next 20 years Anfisa led 10 classes of basket weaving teaching the art form that she had learned as a young woman by her maternal aunt is a basket of anfesias with the floral and scroll work. She describes that anfesia would graph out her designs on graph paper, um, often modeled up after work that she saw in embroidery books, but that she would also make her own designs and graph them out on graph paper. Well, Eunice, um, her writings record that there was a wide variety of students, that there were women from the Coast Guard base who were interested in learning. Perhaps the audience that they targeted most were young native women that they wanted to pass the craft on to, believing that they would maintain a linkage with Kodiak and be good potential teachers to pass the art form on. There were basket weavers in Old Harbor and Akiak that were weaving and teaching um, their family members at the same time that Anfesia and Eunice we're teaching here in Kodiak, and one of the most prolific and productive is Fedosia Inga, and we're lucky to have a number of her baskets. This basket is one of my favorite pieces, both because of its size, it's quite large, and the incorporation of beadwork, which Fedosia did a lot of. And I also really like the interior. This piece was made in the 1950s, and I just like this incorporation of this whimsical lining. Fedosia Inga was a very skilled weaver and a teacher. For example, June Simeonov Pardu learned from Fedosia and June is herself an incredibly accomplished weaver and now a teacher. This one is weave one, skip one, and, and weave over for the turning stitch. And with that one, it's, you know, there's no, there are no words to describe how you do a turning stitch. You have to learn through observation. So it's hands-on teaching. And so it's a legacy that continues and you can trace from student to teacher to new student. Stand it. So now you're taking out <laughs> some of what I did. Yes. Because it just, just was too far apart. Too far apart. Hmm. I thought it would be fairly easy because I am a craft person, but it wasn't. <laughs> I was ready to quit on the third class. I thought if I cannot Catch on, I, that's it, you know, but I was able to catch on. I don't know, I finally clicked at the third class. But after I started teaching myself, I noticed it did take people about three classes before they connect with it and they see what's happening. So, so I was normal. <laughs> Arlene was a student of Eunice here at the museum, I believe just in the kitchen next door to where we are now, they learned. Before the end of the first semester, she was having health problems, so she had to stop. So I went home and that's when I read the book for two years and I practiced and I cut grass and I almost cried. And <laughs> so at the end of that time, I went back to her after two years and she was pleased with what I had done. So she asked if I would like to be her helper. And Arlene, of course, is a, a master weaver. Her baskets are just exemplary and so well done. And she's taught her daughters as well as a number of students through the Kodiak College. 
I, well, I just wanted it to flow more like the water or the yeah water, the ocean, you know, when it comes in the waves. I wanted to give that movement. And then I corded the top just so that I could add the little beads and, again, not finish it off tight. I wanted the whole thing to kind of flow. I deliberately allowed the bottom to to um, wave, and that's by adding adding extra spokes. She has a reputation as being so skilled that when she does offer classes through the college, people flock to them. Every second Saturday, we try to do a different kids' activity at the museum. Basically, I gotta try to come up with something relevant that's fun with the time of the year and our culture and try to find innovative ways to get kids interested in learning about the Lutic culture and its people. I think Eunice and, and Fija and Fidosia Inga and all the women who taught um, younger generations of basket weaving would be really pleased to see the continuation of the program here and also the work of the Alutic Museum to take basket weaving out to the villages and to reunite skilled weavers of today with the pieces from the early 19th century that are in the museums overseas. That's also an important part of the evolution of the art form. Very nice. That one looks so pretty with that gold on the frame. It really makes that grass. They keep coming back and want to keep learning more.